I want to finish with just one statement, one point. Among the tragedies of our time, not only the fact that the left speaks about land for peace, land for peace, but so many Orthodox Jews, so many Orthodox Jews speak about the concept that to save a life or to save lives, one must give up, give up land. It's important that we know what the Allah says, really and truly. Peace for land, land for peace. In the Bible we find one of the, one of the judges was called Yiftach. Yiftach Agiladi. Yiftach from Gilead. And he was the judge of his time. He was the great sage of his time. He was the Gadol of his time. As the rabbi said in the Talmud, Yiftach Yiftach in his time was as great as Samuel was in his time. Whoever lives in his time, and if he's the greatest one in his time, we don't say, well, had he lived in this and this time, he wouldn't have been the great. You don't compare time. So he was the judge. In the, and in the Bible, in the Bible, we find that in his time, the Ammonites, Ammon, declared war on Israel. They declared war on Israel. They fought with Israel. Yiftah hears this. He's the leader of his people. And he sends a messenger to the Ammonites. And he says, Malivalach, what's, what's the business over here? I mean, why a war? Why do you want to go to war? And Melech b'nei Ammon, the king of, of the Ammonites, sends him back. And he says, because when the Jews left Egypt, you took my land. You took my land. The truth was that the land had been originally taken by Sicho, who went to war against the Jews. He went to war, and he lost, so he also lost his land. And the king of Ammon then ends with a moderate tone. Listen to how he's... Listen! He says, Vata, and now, Ashiva eten b'shalom. Give it back in peace. Shut, shut. Peace. Give me the land. I'll give you peace. Peace now. Peace instantly. Peace immediately. Peace. Now you can imagine outside of Yiftach's home, a hundred thousand peace now people. God said, land for peace. Land for peace. Give them the land. We'll get peace. And what land are they talking about all over here? Chas b'shalom. They're not talking about Tel Aviv, God forbid. They're not even talking about the West Bank. Of course not. No one would even think of the West Bank. But he's talking about the East, ba- the East Bank. So a hundred thousand Jews now going to give up the East. Who needs the East Bank? We have the River Jordan as our defense perimeter. Give him the East Bank. Give that. Don't be such an extremist. So Yiftach, the Gadol of his time, the great scholar of his time, sends back the following message to the king of Ammon. He says, listen. He says, Motik Tishma, listen. Habibi, listen to me. He says, you have a god named Chmosh. That was the god of Whatever your God gives you, God bless. It's all you. Let Hashem, Elokeinu, 
מפנינו אותו נירש. And that which the Lord our God gave unto us that week. And he went to war. And he won the war. But he, he went to war and didn't say land for peace and pikuach nefesh to chashtachim and to save a life. You have to give up land. Why didn't he? Why didn't he? Because of what the Ramban said, which I quoted to you earlier. That not give me a plan. The zui she achachamim or inota milchemet mitzvah. And this is what our our rabbis tell us. It's called an obligatory war. Within the halacha, there is a concept known as milchemet mitzvah, an obligatory war when one must go to war. The peace-loving Jewish people have a mitzvah. One of the six hundred and 13 called Milchemet Mitzvah, when you must go to war. And the rabbis tell us, when is a Milchemet Mitzvah? And they say to us, a Milchemet Mitzvah is a war against the seven Canaanite nations, Amalek, and any time the enemy comes up against Israel. That is an, an obligatory war. So for all the rabbis that say when there's a danger to life you have to give up the mitzvah of keeping Israel. Because it's like shut, shut. If there's a danger to life you have to violate shut. If there's a danger to life you have to violate the mitzvah of keeping land. Nice? Makes sense? Think. Think. Every mitzvah in the Torah, except one, 